When I started working with propellant, it was kind of alarming just because I would get sick. And it got to the point where I actually knew that I was going to work with a product and I said, I'm gonna get sick. And I would. I started noticing that I, I was having other issues when I was at work. It got to the point where uh, I, I couldn't breathe at all. But each day would get worse and worse and worse as I, I worked. And then by the weekend, it would clear up and then I'll start all over again. When I first started having symptoms, I went through my medical team at my employer and was seen by their physician. And after I didn't really get any solid answers to what was causing my issues, I went to my regular family doctor, explained everything to her, and she had told me that I need to see a specialist. And uh, within several months, we had some answers. I was out of the workplace for a while, and then we found out that that's what was going on. I took a test and it was like 130 things that could be triggers. And at work, they would seem to be the worst triggers. And then I started putting things together. And then that's how I figured out it was uh, work-related. The way that you diagnose work-related asthma has several steps. The first is that the clinician needs to confirm that you actually have asthma. You may have something else. But there are certain medical tests that are done to confirm that someone has asthma. Usually it involves some lung function tests and maybe some other types of tests. But once the diagnosis of asthma is confirmed, then there are some additional steps to try to confirm that it's work-related asthma. And the critical piece on that is the patient noticing that the symptoms are worse at work and they're better when they're not at work. So that clinical part of the history is really important. 